And so we're going to do a roll call. Um, so let's see here, Beverly Bates. I'm here, but please call me Bev. Okay, Bev. <laughs> uh, Richard Abuza. I'm here, and uh, just for everybody's education, it's uh, a long U as in Buick or beautiful. So it's Abuza. <laughs> Abuza, okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, Hannah Schaefer. Here. Melissa Fowler. Here. And Gwenda Bod. Here. And uh, so, um, let's see, are there any public comments tonight? Yeah, I'm just here to listen. But okay, yeah. good to see you, Benjamin. Thanks. Good to see you all. Okay, and then do we have minutes for the November fourth meeting? Um, Carolyn the staff Nat, I don't know if she had them out. Um, I, I don't think I didn't send them out. Um, okay. so I can uh, double check uh, if I have them, and okay. we can do that for next meeting. Okay, so um. We are, can we table the approval of, can I get a, I guess a motion to approve the minutes from November 4th, put that on the table for next month? Correct, yeah. Somebody offer a motion for that. Uh, I move we table the minutes. I second. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Um, so to approve that, we have to do a roll call. So I'm going to call Hannah Schaefer. Yes. Richard Abusa. Yes. Bev Bates. Yes. Melissa Fowler. Yes. And Gwen Debod. Yes. Okay. Uh. Now, moving on to number five, discussion on Northampton Draft Workforce Housing Special Tax Assessment District. Um, so uh, I'm still learning this stuff, um, but Keith, I'm gonna assume. Yeah, that's me. Yes. So um, thanks everyone. Um, I'm just trying to get caught up with everything, um, but um, so, you know, working on a smaller laptop. So, but um, so it's the workforce housing uh, special tax assessment district, WHSTA, um, and it's a um, framework that the state allows for a city to create a area, a continuous area um, that allows. Um, that is approved by city council. Um, and this allows developers that create workforce housing, which is anything that is uh, above, well, 80, 80%, 120% is the um, going rates of what is considered workforce housing or mixed income. Uh, and so the developers, um, if the city approves this, developers are allowed to have um, uh, for a construction period of two years, they have 100% um, of their taxes abated, and then 75, 50, and 25 for the next three years. Um, and so we're investigating um, having a, a district like this in Northampton. Um, I can pull up the map here very soon, um, but it's basically all downtown core, a lot of Pleasant Street, and then jumps over to Holly Street and up King Street. Um, there's, you know, um, some other, what we call underutilized parcels, parcels that are currently vacant or um, kind of, so um, there's a lot, and there's, you know, some parcels that we would, are considering, you know, kind of um, very important. So 33 King Street, 
That's the um, the old courthouse um, at the 79 King Street, uh, which is already slated for um, this some a developer looking at um, putting in, I want to say over 100 units. Um, they're doing some permitting at the moment. Um, this all this district also includes the giant um, Honda site um, on King Street at 171. So um, if they ever change their mind, you know, they could um, they could utilize this. Um, and so um, it sounds kind of weird why are we not taking taxes, um, you know, workforce housing, there's limited, um, there's less um, funding um, for these at the moment. Um, so this will be able to tap into that. Um, and I pulled up the, uh, in a letter I sent you all kind of, pulled up what some area meaning income uh, would look like. Um, and so what does, you know, 80% or 120% of area medium look like? Um, and if you give me a second, I can pull that up. And so, you know, other communities are using um, mass housing. So that's the multi they do borrowing for multifamily units. Um, they use 120% as workforce housing. Orleans, 120. Um, Nantucket, they're at 240%. We're not there, but they are allowed that. They have, have special permission. Um, and so we're looking at, um, you know, something like 120%. Um, and so if it's helpful, I can pull up the map, uh, but really kind of want your feedback from this. Um, and, you know, the the boundaries, are these appropriate? And then 120%, is that appropriate? Um, so I'll stop there because um, I'll take some questions. Uh, Richard, go ahead. Yeah, um, this is not a question, but it's sort of since public relations is part of our uh, mission here, you know, if it's called a special tax assessment district, the first thing that's going to happen is people are going to think that they're going to, everybody's going to have to pay an assessment to do this. And it's actually a tax incentive district or a tax relief district. If we're trying to I don't, we might have to call it something for statute, but when we talk about it in public, uh, I think we might in, avoid some confusion if we call it a tax incentive district. That is good, good, good stuff, yes. Good, Beth. So uh, in the great minds think alike, I did a little of the math and Feel free if anybody had came up with different numbers. But in Northampton, the median income, this was in Keith's memo, um, at 120% is 131,000 and change. Um, 100 is 109 and change. Um, I'm going to take you down the road because I think it's important. 80% uh, is 87,000 and change and 60 is 65,000 and change. If you happen to be at the 120 level um, and you use 30% of your income as a standard for what you pay for rent, um, you could afford to pay rent of 3,285 um, bucks. I also looked at uh, what you could buy for that. Um, the median home price in Northampton is 468,000 and change. Uh, we could quibble about that number because obviously it changes all the time and that's a median, which means it's smack dab in the middle, uh, not an average. Um, right. But uh, the uh, uh, basically that household, if they put 10% down with current interest rates could afford uh, basically to buy a half a million dollar house. Um, in terms of rent, um, as I said, for that household of, at 120, they can afford 3,285. 
the most current I could find median, again, rent for Northampton is 2,300. Now I understand there's a real scarcity issue. So even if that's the median rent, if you can find the unit, you're feeling good, right? The listed vacancy rate is 4.4%, which is a low vacancy rate, but not the lowest in the world. Um, so I, when I looked at this, I had several thoughts. One, I don't think this is particularly targeted. Um, I understand mass housing puts a cap on the rents that you can charge if you're financing with them, but that's very different from mass housing saying that's what workforce housing is. Um, and it's certainly not what I understand to be uh, the meaning of mixed income. Mixed income by definition means that you have you're serving households up and down the income tiers. Right. Uh, 120 is a generally accepted max, but I think for our purposes, we might at least want to talk about whether we want to say 100 seems like enough of a max. Um, I understand that there's no regula regulation around this. There's, there's what the practice is of other communities. And so <laughs> I, I found it entertaining that uh, Nantucket put their cap at two, 240% of median. Uh, but uh, I think right. we at least ought to think if we want to kind of put some downward pressure on that, given that if you buy these numbers, a 120% of median family is not experiencing much hardship in the housing market here. The other thing that I would suggest is, and again, tell me if there's a rule about this somewhere, I think we should have our the, the bottom tier be 60% because if it's at 60%, it qualifies the developer to use tax credits if they choose. They don't have to, but they could. At 80%, you can't uh, unless you have some other way that you are actually serving an average of 60% of median. Um, in, you know, the question rolls around, I have, Two or three questions. I, I know it sounds like I'm just delivering a speech, but um, is it uh, both rental and uh, home ownership or just rental? Oh, uh, just rental. Okay. Um, and if you wanted to get some subsidy, you, you the developer, into the development, some project based Section 8 or something, could you? Is there any reason you couldn't? And then you could be serving people at, you know, 20% of median. There's nothing that precludes the developer from doing that, um, right. but um, there are some stipulations about the AMI level that they have on there um, targeted for what they what they call in workforce housing. Um, right. And, right. And so it gets there's more weeds in that. But um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then my last question is, um, I, if the city anticipates there's going to be. I guess it's an entitlement, right? So if you build it, you get it, right? So there's not a competitive factor here. Right, and so can I just clarify one thing? Um, so yeah. you're right. Um, so this plan, um, it's adopted by city council and from that moment when it's adopted, it starts at three o'clock. And so to get a plan approved, you must have a developer signed on. And so I, it's not a, we build it, they will come. It's, you have to have at least one developer with a parcel and, you know, it behooves you if you want them to use it to, to kind of talk with them and line it up. And so yeah. what we're trying to do is, uh, you know, talk with you guys, uh, get some feedback and what is good, bring it to city council and bring it up to their radar. And if they have any changes and really when the developer that we're talking with is ready to go, we will get it approved. And that starts to clock. So it gives the developer more time. And then obviously any other developer coming in afterwards would have the ability to use it. So so one more thing, and, and then um, I'll shut up. Um, I looked at 171, I think that's the address. Benjamin will correct me if I'm wrong, King Street, um, because it's the most extreme cost, uh, I believe. 
of the properties that you listed. There may be some others that have um, buildings in good shape on them, but I didn't go there. Um, and based on the city's current tax rate, the taxes and using what we understand the current owners paid for the site, five plus million bucks, then the current tax on an annual basis would be uh, just about $76,000. I didn't focus on what you said, Keith, which is that the amount of the abatement goes down over the three years. So I just multiplied that number times three and came up with $227,000. I don't think that's much of an incentive, especially depending on how many units you're building on the site. So say you're doing that 100 units, right? Divide that by 100 in terms of what the, you know, little shave off the total cost or profitability is for those units. Uh, I don't know who the developer is that you're talking with, obviously, but I would, it would be interesting to at least talk to that developer or others about what incentive they would really need in order to get into this game. Because anybody will take a tax deduction, right? <laughs> or, or mm. debate. Doesn't mean it's the reason that you built on that site and in this way. It doesn't mean that you were going to get any more than the, what did I say, 3,200 bucks a month in rent from the top tier um, household. And so I just wonder whether the city isn't kind of giving away tax money um, without necessarily incentivizing developers to do anything that they wouldn't have done anyways. End of speech. Thank you. Fair point. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bev. Anybody else? Do we have any feedback about what other towns have done or are planning to do and what the effect has been, or is this too new? Um, I reached out to Nantucket. I believe they were using it, and they said they were at 240. Um, that was er much earlier in the year, um, and so um, I did a lot of research earlier, but I didn't find a lot of data out there. Um, and then I did reach out to um, Quincy um, and it looked like they were using this zone, but they were actually using the multifamily borrowing. So mass housing also has the borrowing and I think that has money, but uh, I think the income limits are stricter. They're more defined there. Yeah. But I've not found a lot out there. Um, I guess my question is, I mean, you know, the area median income includes retirement income. And as it's not exactly a, a reflection of the working income um, of actual like workers, like everyday workers. Um, you know, uh, so I guess that's like, for me, a little bit of a conundrum. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that word. Um, in terms of equity and accessibility. And um, so I'm, I mean, you said, there's nothing that would preclude them to go as low as 60% or even 20%, but could there be a way to do this that could preclude them and that would that not then that would be even less of an incentive. Um, I'm sorry, I wish I could ask amazing questions like Bev just did and, and have more of a critical take yeah. on this or, or be able to question it more critically in some way. Um, but I think the floor is 80%. Um, and then they give a range of a, up to 120. Um, and so even on the mass housing, um, the multifamily borrowing, they have 80 to 20 as their kind of range. Um, and there's just a few outliers out there, you know, using 110 or 150. But 
um, I don't think those numbers would fly for us. So I think our sweet stop spot would be, you know, somewhere in that 80 to 120. Okay. If I could just help um, clarify a little bit, Mass Housing is a lender and their tool for lending is tax exempt bonds. And so they have to have a cap, but most of their deals are not at 120% or even close. Most of their deals are true mixed income, which means that, you know, probably right. they have tax credits and low income housing tax credits, excuse me, that's a, a federal program um, and a whole bunch of other subsidies. And again, the mixed income that I'm familiar with takes you from very low income, which is essentially folks who have zero income or nominal income, and then you tranche it up to create what you think in your community is a workable mix. And many mm -hmm. try to get to market, but in many places, market rents don't pay to build the unit. So they still may be market, but they're, you know, getting some subsidy. And so I know, another, I, I, I know that's complicated, but um, that's... Um, and the other thing I was kind of thinking in my mind was, you know, Bev is absolutely right. Like the area median rent is like 2,300 a month, but HUD says it's 1,650. Uh, so that is a real, um, you know, uh, jagged edge there a real um that's 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 striking to me um uh, it means that you know even even with the area median and it, rent being you know if it is around 2300 i don't know how many bedrooms that is i think it's two um you know it's it's up there for rent and um and so i just you know, I just wanted to note that. Thanks. Yeah, Gwen, I think that's... Um... You know, the more housing we build, the more that opens up. So we're saying, the, 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 theoretically, um, maybe, um, I don't know. Yeah, Gwen, just to go back to what you said about what the difference of what HUD says and what the actual that's tied up in our us being part of the Springfield MSA. Um, but right. that's here nor there. Um, right, yeah. which is what and, um, you know, I think this is. To, yeah, that's yeah. And, you know, I think this is you know, part of the conversations we had earlier is um, different meetings is, you know, how can we kind of support all housing? And, you know, mm -hmm. if this newer housing opens up, maybe people uh, want to move out of the current situation. And that right. does, you know, so and that's, right. um, you know, we trying to. Yeah, it's a piece of a lot more units, you know, um, is yeah. what we really need to do, but it might be slower than we anticipate, you know. Uh -huh. Is the sense of what we're thinking that we certainly want to encourage any program that's going to increase housing stock and especially increase affordable housing stock. And so we're supportive of the concept, but we're trying to delve into what our recommendation might be about how it should be structured in order to best accomplish that? Is that sort of the place we're at now? Yeah, I think we want to have be able to use all the tools in the toolbox and, you know, um, uh, you know, trying to put something together to make sense, but obviously, um, you know, getting feedback and you know, I don't. I don't have the developer's mind. Uh, Bev has a lot to speak to that, and so, you know, if this is something that's truly worthwhile, or am I, are we missing something here? Um, but uh, it doesn't seem like a, a huge lift to do this. 
um, and there's not like ongoing monitoring or some, something like that. So if 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 the developers on on the margin about you know doing a deal or something, or maybe they see this and they just get interested. I don't know, but um, we want to at least have it available. Okay. Um, Keith, did um you, you guys discuss at all the possibility of changing the rate at which the um tax abatement or whatever it is goes down in exchange for greater affordability? Um that's a good question. Um I mean it, question. the the regulation um well I don't believe that you can because there's a 40 page document by the um, Division of Labor Services or something um, that um, determines all this. Um, and so it's it's a, to Richard's point, it's a tax incentive, um, it's, a, it's a TIF and a uh, workforce housing uh, manual. So yep. it, it that that weird word of oh this is an assessment or something that would scare people off the TIF, um, it's kind of tied up in that manual, um, but they're very uh, clear um, with the um, the hundred percent for construction for two years, and then seventy five, fifty, and twenty five. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's going to reduce the cost of construction by whatever the number actually is. It's not going to have much impact on the long-term operations of the real estate because nobody's going to underwrite it, right? Um, and I, I, all I'm trying to suggest is that if the city is going to do this, they want to know that they're getting something for it, right? And maybe the way to do that is, as perhaps it's being suggested, you roll it out and see how it goes. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Does anybody else have anything they want to add to any of this discussion? Is there anything more, um, anything that stands out to you, Keith, that we haven't discussed or? Uh, no, I mean, uh, I would say there's a lot there, but this the mechanism, it's, um, you know, the things are required, you know, um, the, the dates and the timeline, all that kind of stuff. It's more just um, uh, really getting to the weeds, I guess. But, you know, it's, uh, you know, we if I do go to city council, we'd love your support, uh, but there's things that you really want to um hammer out and you know maybe it's something we can have a different meeting but um you know I, I would want to go to city council unless you know i had your guys um adjustments and approval so that's okay. all i'll say about that um when would you go to city council with this keith it's not a hard deadline. Um, I think, like I said, uh, once they approve it, it starts the clock, but I want to get it on their radar, get their feedback. Um, and then whenever, if the developer does move forward, then uh, we will uh, go to city council for their approval. So it, it'll probably be two meetings with city council. One, just say, hey, okay. this is what we're trying to do. Do you have any feedback? and then make adjustments and then go back to them for approval. Okay, should should we continue this discussion for another month to think about any further questions? Or do you, does everybody feel as though we've had some, you know, does anyone still, you know, want some answers before um, we would approve for Keith to take this to city council? Does that make uh sense? Yeah. Gwen, I'm just curious based on what Keith just said, and maybe you can't answer me, Keith, and that's completely uh, fine. But you made it sound as though the developer is sort of asked for this. 
and you're creating a program around it, or you talked about, you know, creating a program like this and the developer said, oh, goody, I could use a couple hundred thousand dollars. I, I'm just trying to figure out why your timetable is tied to his or hers. Um, you know, I was the one that um, really kind of did a deep dive on this. And I said, hey, let's let's look at this. Um, you know, I walk around the city and I see a bunch of parking lots and just, on, you know, buildings not being used. And it, you know, I've been doing that since I went to, I was going to, you know, Pearl Street as a, as a high schooler. Um, but, um, and so looked at it and kind of put some numbers and did some stuff in Google Earth and said, hey, that looks like it encompasses a lot of stuff. Um, and then uh, talked with uh, Director Mish about it. Um, and this was over the summer, so this is not new. Um, but I think since then, uh, we've talked to, she's talked to other developers, um, people that um, have things in works or, you know, looking at um, parcels that uh, are not being utilized for what we want them to, um, you know, like once if you want the big, you know, big block of concrete and cars or asphalt and cars. Um, so, uh, I think the conference, I wasn't part of the conversation with the developer, but I think um, she talked to them about it and like, hey, that sounds like something we might be interested in. It might help move the numbers because, um, you know, financing is changing as the interest rates move. So the numbers sure. change, you know. Right. Um, is anybody interested then um, um, on making a motion to approve that Keith takes us to city council? And, and Gwen, before you, um, I'm happy to come back. I okay. have like the text, you know, I'm, so I'm giving an overview, but we really need to have like a text that describes okay. more in detail about the plan, the zone. Sure. And then kind of the approval process and um, just the administration, I can next, you know, next meeting or next two meetings, I can send that out and you can read it. Um, and then you'll have a better understanding of what I'm actually. Okay. So, so should we hold off on that then? I mean, um, well, now you just said the word zone. Um, Richard, go ahead. Yeah, I want to point out that I think one of the things that's been of concern to me is so much of the focus has been on home ownership, which certainly is a wonderful thing. But we do have a real shortage of rental housing, and any rental housing helps our market, uh, especially anything that's workforce. And I also, in reading the various articles about demographic shifts, it does seem like the paradigm of home ownership is not quite the holy grail that it once used to be and that mm. and there's generational preferences both uh right. upper age and lower age that are saying we prefer rental housing so i do think it's important you know i don't know if this is the mechanism for it because i i haven't fully digested what i think are some good questions from bev so i'm not prepared to recommend it but I, I am pleased to see an emphasis on rental housing. Okay. Thank you. Feels feels right to me, Gwen. Um, I I completely agree with what Richard just said. We should not be uh, discouraging the idea, but maybe. Um, we can offer some helpful tweaks um, sure. that might make it uh, work better. And, you know, it's interesting. I was thinking if I showed up at a city council meeting, I, my comments probably would be very much like they were earlier, which would not equal support necessarily. Right. And so, I would personally feel better if we had a little bit more time to kick it around before 
Okay. Uh, support. Sure. Okay, so we will, um, I think Melissa left. I'm not sure that we still have a quorum. Oh, Melissa's here. Do we need to vote on tabling this? No. Um, just well, it seems <laughs> this is this is just listed as a discussion, so it doesn't look like it was going to require a vote or anything like that. And Keith, um, if we can work on just getting, you know, more familiar with this and more information, um, that would be great. No problem. Okay, thank you. Okay, item five is any updates on the housing bond bill. Has anybody um, ha does anybody have any updates on anything about the housing bond bill or um, is there any new information that we know? Go ahead, Hannah. Does that include updates about the um, like broker fee home rule petition in relation sure. to the bond bill or? Yeah. Um, okay, because I, well, I don't want to be jumping the agenda if there's also right. a section for a housing bond bill or bond bill adjacent, I'd say. Um, does anybody else have any other updates for the housing bond bill before I jump in? I really don't. Okay. Um, so I did reach out to Representative Sabadosa about the broker fee home rule petition. Um, it had been in the housing bond bill, but I think as folks know, it hadn't been able to, it didn't end up going through to the bill at the state level. Um, mm -hmm. So I had asked her what the next steps were at the local level. And she had said that unfortunately, if we want to continue with it, that it has to be reintroduced. Um, so okay. uh, it sounds like there's still some possibility that at least at the state level, there are groups working on it. And that, um, so I think my next step is going to be to reach out to them and see who's working on it. But I wanted to ask with that, like, if it made sense for us to continue um, what the next steps are. I don't know what it looks like to reintroduce a home rule petition. Like, I don't know, does it have to be rewritten with slightly different language? Does it just get resubmitted and the process starts again? That's that's where I run up against the limits of my knowledge. That's a great question. I definitely know that Key is working with some of the groups that are continuing on this mission. Um, I know like with a lot of the public housing stuff, it was a lot of um, interacting with different groups like CHAPA, um, Mass Union of Public Housing Tenants, um, signing on to petitions, looking at the wording of the of what was gonna go into it or um, different things like that. So that would be my suggestion, I guess. So do you know, Gwen, um because I know, you know, with the initially, my recollection was the process was that the process was that we had sort of draft some language and then it went to city council and there was some language drafted there. And then uh, Representative Sabadosa and Senator Comerford had gotten on board. Yeah. And, like, yeah. Is, is it possible to just sort of use the, like, because the template's there? Uh, uh, um, well, I would definitely go by the original template um, and then find out, try to find out like why, like we know that our representatives supported that, um, which is wonderful. Um, I guess it would be like sort of like looking around and trying to find out like who, it's like, okay, who voted against it? Or did it just never come? Did it just never come to the floor? I, I don't know um, if it ever even made it to the floor. Do you? The last, excuse me, <clears throat> the last thing that it said was, um, let me see the exact language that like a study, uh, the bill was accompanied by a study order in September. Uh, I don't know exactly what that means. A study so, order, it said? 
A study order. All right. Well, um, you know, I don't know. We could look into that. I mean, do you want to offer to look into that? Um, sure. Yeah. All right, I mean, I'm cool. I'm happy I mean, to just keep going. I was I was sure. curious if anybody else here, you know, had more information than I do. Right. Otherwise, I'm happy to just keep. Yeah. Going. Just. Yeah. And you know, if you need me to do any digging around, let me know. Okay. So, um, great. Okay. And, uh -huh. I, nope. I just uh, wanted to ask, I mean, if there are, if folks have any sort of preference between like pursuing this at the local level versus trying to join up with groups at the state level, or if just any, any motion on this is good motion. Um, I don't know uh, if it would be supported. Oh, you mean like as a home rule petition or something like that, or? Oh, just just sort of general opinion of the house of the housing partnership about you know where where my efforts could be best spent at this point. I would say if the original issue is the state, then I would start there because I know locally there was a lot of support for it, not one hundred percent and not by everybody, but you know it was a popular thing, so statewide, so. That's just my thoughts on it. I don't know if anyone else has any thoughts on that. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna move on to number seven, updates on city zoning reform. Hey, Gwen. Which, yep. Um, I do have an update or related to- A housing the, bond, okay. The Affordable Homes Act. Um, oh. Amy Landry from uh, Habitat for Humanity. Um, oh. She reached out um, because there is something, a provision in there um, that um, they would want our help supporting. Yes, uh, I so saw that. Yeah, if Amy's available um, to speak to that, um, I told her to come because right. it they do home ownership and Okay, um, sure. Amy, um, any updates? <laughs> Hi, all. Thanks for having me. Um, I had forwarded to Keith's office um, some information about, uh, well, the, the Affordable Homes Act includes a, a number of earmarks, as you probably know, and one of them is a $500,000 earmark for a warehouse for Pioneer Valley Habitat. Um, Lindsay Sabadosa initiated that. And for us, um, right now, our, our stuff is warehoused everywhere. It's in the basement of our building. It's in a church back um, lot. It's outside our building. It's in people's garages. So the, uh, the idea of the centralized warehouse will offer us just efficiency and economy of scale, um, both in terms of storage and purchasing materials. We can't purchase in any large quantities. We have no storage kind of thing. And with the costs rising so exponentially lately, um, this is just really critical for us for, for keeping homes affordable. So anyway, um, this earmark is not automatic. Um, and we need to lobby the EOHLC uh, to include the earmarked amount in their capital improvement plan, which will be put together at the beginning of 2025. Lindsay's basically said, you know, squeaky wheel gets the grease and as much as we can lobby, send letters, um, that'll ensure that this gets into the into the whole budgeting process. Sure. So she, I'll go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. I, I was I was agreeing with you. Yeah, the lobbying thing. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Well, so the Hampshire Franklin delegation has signed on to a letter um, that we co-authored with Lindsay to to go in um, to Secretary Augustus of the EOHLC, and then we're just reaching out to all of housing and home ownership advocates, um, you among them, to see if you'd be willing to write a letter of support. Uh, and I think, I believe, Keith, with that um, message I sent you, also the letters that the letter that we sent, as well as the letter that went from the delegation, that just gives you all the background information. Um, you know, the line item number um, and and the amount and what it's going to be used for, and so forth. And just hoping that the housing partnership would be willing to um, send a letter for us. 
Um, where would the, how, the warehouse be? Great question. We have a committee now that's just looking into possibilities. The earmark specifies buying a warehouse. Um, we still are working out whether that is necessary now that that's the language or whether we could also take over a warehouse that already exists. Um, so we have a couple of commercial realtors just beginning the search. It's still early though, as you all know, real estate changes day to day. So we don't wanna to get too far down the road until we know for sure this is happening. And um, in the meanwhile, we're just in the very early exploratory stages. For us, we're just, we are also kind of developing a set of questions for all of our users to determine best location, everything we need, making sure this is the, you know, the one warehouse that, that we get. And we may try to include office space as well, um, just to consolidate operations. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, sure. Does anybody have any questions for Amy? Richard? Um, I don't have questions. I am very aware that this is a very worthwhile thing, and I, I would like to make a motion that we recognize that Habitat has been an, an a essential and effective player in creating affordable housing in our area, and that we strongly support their getting funding for a warehouse to further the goals of providing additional affordable housing. I would second that. Okay, we'll do a roll call. Do we uh, have a quorum? It's we, here. we may not. Oh, I'm here or in the dark. Okay. 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 Um, okay. Uh, so I will start with Hannah Schaefer. Uh, yes. Melissa Fowler. Yes. Bev Bates? Yes. Richard Abusa? Yes. Gwen Abad? Yes. Okay. So that passes. Thank you. Thank you all. And, and please let, let me know um, if you need any more information or the addresses or anything. I think it's all in the letters. It's pretty okay. self-explanatory. Um, and then it gets sent to um, somebody else. Could okay. I ask another question? Um, oh, yes. I, I presume it also is not a bad thing if, if we want to individually write letters? I think it can't hurt. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, it Thank might you. depend on what the letters say, but assuming mm -hmm. they're in support. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I Thank can you. only... I just want to say, I can only imagine what that's like because I worked in construction and it was always insane. And so to have one place where you can always get stuff is really helpful um, and probably more sustainable than anything else. So, yeah. Thank you. When we bring our interns on every semester, and Keith can probably remember this, one of the questions we ask is, do you have a vehicle? Can you travel among all these, these destinations to pick up our supplies, drop right. them off at the sites? And we have more than one site going. We have more than one place where we have storage. Yeah. So re really appreciate your help um, in this effort. Great. Thank well, you. Thank you for doing the work. Thank you. Okay, um, Okay. so um, now I, I would say, are there, are there any updates on city zoning reform? And I do have a question, um, Keith, about this, is in the workforce housing situation, would that, would it become necessary to change the zoning of where any of these places are? Mm. Zoning doesn't change. Okay. So no updates on zoning reform. Go ahead, Bev. No. Okay. Um, if I was going to say something, I forgot. <laughs> it it unfortunately kind of dates back to the uh, uh, the uh, affordable housing bond bill. Um, I'm wondering if at a subsequent meeting we could maybe drill down a bit and understand what parts of the bill that uh, the city at least feels are most relevant and important uh, 
to support. And I've heard just through the grapevine that uh, the state is completely overwhelmed and actually rolling out meaningful uh, program guidelines and timelines and all that stuff because they're, you know, overwhelmed with other stuff. I don't know if that's true, but I would be really interested in sort of what do we what do we see coming down the pike? Some a lot of it's just additional funding for old programs. And that's great. There are a few new things in there that are kind of interesting, uh, like the commercial property conversion program, which seems hmm. very relevant right. in uh, Northampton. Yes. Um, and I will confess, I don't know anything about what the public housing strategy is in Northampton and whether uh, it in any way uh, is benefited by this funding. There's lots of public housing money. It's the biggest single line item. So now I don't want to put you on the spot, Keith. Um, I know this is your, you're just back, um, but that would be an interesting topic for me. Yeah. Well, Bev, can I say two things about me? Oh, please. Um, the, I did apply for some technical assistance um, and um, which we were awarded and it was um, through mass housing uh, mass housing, one of those people, but um, and it's looking at our parcels um, within that are um, commercial second floor, second floor commercial, and it's going to look at the the oh, yes. floor print and see how many of those can be converted to housing, um, and so that is something we're interested in. Obviously, um, we you know we do have some. Um, second floor, third floor commercial um, that is vacant or, right. um, but, uh, you know, in bigger cities like Boston, there are more of these. Um, and as uh, people can work remotely or they can kind of consolidate um, some of these office, especially office space will sit vacant. Um, so that is something we've investigated and I do need to ping back the um, consultant about that because we're waiting, but um I, I love the, that. I, I'm sorry. No, just we would love to hear, you know, also what you guys want to work on because, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that might be interesting to me to investigate further, you know, um, uh, you, you guys might want to investigate something else. And so, you know, having us working on the same thing might be beneficial. So we would love to hear. If you have a, more time to look at them, we'd love to hear kind of what your priorities would be. Um, I, I will say most recently, um, we agreed with or supported um, that there, there's uh, some a little adjustment that Alex Jarrett had talked about in terms of making it possible in this area of Florence um, for there to be like second and third floors um, of that zoning to like you know, like if an owner wants to live upstairs from their business or something like that, um, I think that's a great idea and a great use of building for buildings. Um, and then the other thing was the approval recently that we had in the city for the carriage houses to be um, for conversions of that sort. And I think that's a great idea. And I'm, I believe that went through. Um, and my phone is ringing right now, and I don't know where exactly where it is. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, okay. And then is there anything particular that anybody wants to discuss next month in regards to the um, Affordable Housing Act? No. Um, okay, well, I can think about that, um, but I haven't thought about it for tonight, so. I mean, I, I went through the list, and um, I do know a lot of the programs that have just been, you know, refunded, and that's cool and exciting, um, but the ones that came to my mind are, I ticked off a couple of them, public housing, again, I don't yeah. know if it's within the purview of this group to ponder public housing, but it is a major affordable resource in the city, and I just don't know how, how it's doing. Um, the commercial property conversion program, plus there's a commercial property conversion tax credit, um, 
And I got to believe that if you combine the two, it gets to be fairly potent. Um, right. And obviously, historic rehab tax credit is not new, but there's a fair amount of money there. And it seems like there's a never ending need for financing for historic properties in Northampton. Um, and I meant I got ahead the habitat thing on my list, but in any event, uh, there's so much there. I can understand why it's mind numbing to think about what you might want to talk about, which is why I asked what Keith thinks, you know, is of particular interest to the city, uh, based on both priorities and, and, uh, kind of niche, uh, things that Northampton needs. This I, I will say about, about about public housing in regards to housing bond bill, it's the most amount that's been approved, I think, ever in the history of Massachusetts into um, you know, updating public housing. But what that looks like on the ground to residents and what that might look like to executives might be different. Um so you know, I uh, the other thing is, I'm not sure how the state is going to distribute the monies. Um, I, I think it's going to be needs based that, that whoever needs it the most gets it. Um, it. It's, I mean, probably some of the most vulnerable counties in Massachusetts, you know, um, but, you know, is it true that no matter what, everyone is going to get money? I expect us definitely to get money in in Northampton um for that but you know it's hard to say I'm not really sure I haven't heard anything recently um you know there are some other things that changed in terms of policies that were updated um for residents um from this is from a tenant perspective but um in terms of like larger dollar amounts um, for local tenant organizations to organize, um, you know, so, and also like different new policies about income exemption um, amounts and things like that. Um, you know, there's some of that that I, that I do know about. Um, it's just really gets down into the nitty gritty, but it does help. Um, so, yeah. Um, for next month, um, you know, I, I think we can discuss what we, if there's, I would say like for next month, if there's anything that anyone thinks about throughout the month, just email and let people know and we can put it on the agenda for next month. Is there anything, um, to come up tonight that, that nobody has anticipated? <laughs> Okay, and so that there's, leaves us. There's one thing we might have said at the beginning that I just want to say, which is, uh, welcome back, Keith. I hope. Yes. So, a few right. months of incredible adventure, and uh, it's nice to have you back with us. Well, yes. Thank you. yes, appreciate Keith. that. Welcome back. Yep. Congratulations, Keith, and welcome, welcome back. It's good to see you. <laughs> okay, so that leaves us with one last motion. Do we have a quorum? No, we don't. We probably yeah. should adjourn, and I'll move to adjourn. I'll second, if I can. Sure. Okay, so the roll call. Um, Bev Bates? Yes. yes. Richard Abusa? Yes. Anna Schaefer? Anna? Oh, yes. Okay. And Gwendabad? Yeah. Okay. Take care, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Have a good night.